the supplies for this that you're going to need. First, you need seven colors of acrylic paint, including black and white. You need a canvas panel. You need gel medium. You need a palette knife. need some paint brushes and you need a charcoal pencil or some charcoal here I am setting up for the class this was an acrylic painting class as you may have guessed you need to mix your paint and gel medium using your palette knife you don't want to use your brush because it can damage your brushes also, when you're done, you need to clean your brushes so you won't end up having to kind of pop the acrylic paint out of them when they dry. It's very easy to get it stuck in there, and there I am again. Um, this class was done on February 20th, 2021. It's my first one teaching at home. So I'm mixing the paint there. And I went with a rainbow color scheme for the background, but I didn't exactly pick the colors that I wanted to pick because I couldn't find them in my paint box. But it still worked out pretty well. I'm using some palette paper there, and everything that I'm using in this video, except for the plastic tray and the computer, is linked to in a link down in the description that I will share with you guys. And if you want to view the whole version of the class, you either have to sign up for the class, obviously, or sign up as a patron on my Patreon account, which is Danners M. Um, I post unedited versions of the classes on there so if that's something you're interested in please consider signing up and if you like this video like it and if you want to come back subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell just had to get that in there <laughs> smooth right So, I'm almost done mixing the paint because I messed up on the black paint and got a little bit of white into it and turned it into a gray. And that happened a few times with the paints. They kind of got mixed up because every time I go to mix them, I wouldn't get the palette knife completely clean and I didn't have a, a paper towel to clean them off with. So, I was just like wiping them off on different pieces of palette paper and paper plates which I also use sometimes for palettes and rinsing them off and it, it just didn't do the job so next time I'm going to be sure to bring paper towels back here okay now we're going to start up in the top left hand corner and we're going to paint each of the five colors across the top it's okay when you paint them if they blend together as you're putting them in, and it's okay if they're loose, if they're too thin, because we're going to go back over them, and you can go back over them as many times as you need to to build the color up. But first we want to establish where they're going to be before we really build them up, because you don't really have that much time to work with them, even with the gel medium, which expends, it extends your working time. It still doesn't give you a completely perfect time window. And the next color I went with was green. I don't know why I mixed up the colors so badly, so, but it ends up working out pretty good. You can go in any order that you want, and you don't have to stick to the same color scheme. You can use completely different color schemes. It's all about expressing your creativity. And then I went with blue. 
and I'm going to end up changing from the cobalt blue that I picked right then to a phthalo blue later. Here's where I say if it, that it's okay if it blends a lot because it started blending a lot right and then right there. Then I used some Indian yellow and I used Brilliant Magenta for my purplish shade, which was basically the same as the Rose Matter. Now you use the same colors in the next row, but you shift over to the next color in the order, so it would be green for me. And I found my paintbrush was losing hairs, so I was trying to get that out of the way. Sometimes you have things like that happen. I moved on to the blue and see how muddy the blue is? That's why I'm changing later to the phthalo. You just continue on in this pattern all the way down your canvas and if you have any questions after you watch this, feel free to ask them. And if you want to tell me how awful I am at painting, feel free to. Uh, but I actually ended up liking the end product. It's really pretty. And I hope you'll like yours too. Remember, if you're doing this at home, you can take your time on this. I was having to teach this in a 90 minute class, so I would recommend taking your time on it. Now we're going to go back over the thin areas after it's dried to build up the color. You can see that it's starting to pop more instead of being really washed out. And the same happens across the top of the canvas, except with the Indian yellow, it just kept getting muddier and muddier. So I wish I had found the color that I was looking for, because, I don't know, I mean it's a good color, but... It just, it kind of bothered me today. <laughs> Sorry for going off on that art rant. So just smooth the paint out and blend it together when it's kind of right next to another piece. And that is right when I decided, okay, I'm done with that color and I go for the phthalo blue. And you'll notice in a minute, it's about to get really dark. Well, dark comparatively speaking, because Thalo's not that dark, but it perks it up some. See? Right there. And covering up all the muddy grayish blue. I don't really know why I went with this background, but it, it worked. It's just one of those where I, I don't get why I did it. And that is where the Indian yellow kind of started annoying me even more. So I had to make it cohesive throughout the whole painting. So I had to mess up all the other Indian yellow on there. Okay. And now I'm blending the paints into each other. And then I'm going to let it dry for a minute. And... I will be pulling out a scratch piece of paper and drawing the basically how I want the dandelions to look. And um, I happen to be using sketchbooks that I got a few videos back from Hello Alice and Powerful Packs. And basically what you want to do is draw a wavy line with a little ball at the end and for the dandelion seeds, you'll want to draw basically a Y. So when your dandelion, when your background's dry, you want to draw them onto your can. You want to draw the dandelions onto the canvas, and then draw the seeds, and then you'll go over it with black paint. Well, not the seeds part, but there we go. You just draw the outline. You don't have to color it in. It's okay if it doesn't 
make an actual line on there just as long as it kind of scrapes the paint enough so you know which line to follow. Okay. Now you're going to use your black paint to make the stems and the heads of the flowers where the seeds will come off. And just slowly build that black up. And it may seem weird that you're going to make the little seed or the head of the flower where the seeds come because you're going to be covering that up with white. But it's good to have that in there just to make it more realistic, I guess. Um, it, it looks better that way. Let's just put it that way. almost got all of those painted in and it's okay if you have to go back over them a few times too it's normal to have to touch up your painting and it's okay if nothing's perfect because nothing in nature is perfect so don't give yourself a hard time now we're going to use the white paint for the seeds and you just make little Y's on the stems for the seeds and off to the side. And then you start putting little V's in after you get in enough that are just basically sticking up. And it will just start to look more and more like a dandelion. You want to make sure that you do it at least in a somewhat rounded shape. It doesn't have to be completely there because, you know, dandelions, the whole point is that they blow off. So it's okay if there are ones missing. And then you draw some off to the side where it has blown off or where others have blown off. And it just, it makes it look more in tune with what would happen in nature. You do this all the way across the canvas and then you can see as it goes how much more it looks like an actual dandelion instead of just these random white blobs on the canvas. Every painting has an ugly face so if you're going through that about right now that is totally normal or if you've already gone through it or if you go through it in a few minutes like don't beat yourself up over it it is a natural part of painting and it can be like a very disheartening kind of feeling but it's totally normal i promise now we're almost to the point where you're going to get to basically choose your own adventure with this painting if you think after you've done all the little white marks for the seeds and all the black and you've gone in and fixed every piece you weren't happy with that you're done you can go ahead and stop and when it's done you can paint or stencil or draw your name onto the bottom corner to sign it if you want but if you don't if you want to keep going we may get to add some to this. So the choice is up to you. Obviously I can't judge you from afar, so, and I wouldn't want to judge you. But if you're feeling good, it's okay to go ahead and stop or join us on the rest of the adventure. If you're continuing, we're going to use some black paint to make smaller dandelions in the background and we just take the black paint and our liner brush and we draw little wavy lines they don't even have to be as wavy as the first ones and the heads of the flowers don't have to be as big either but it kind of makes it 
feel like they're not just random dandelions there. Or at least that's how I felt. We're about to start to add our seeds. And this time you're just gonna dot the white paint on. You don't have to go into as much detail because these aren't the focus of the painting. So just dot it on. And you can dot some in the background when you've gotten enough on the flowers themselves to give it even more cohesion. Um, you just go until it feels right for you. Your painting does not have to look like mine. In fact, it's not even possible for two people to really make the same painting twice. I, I know there are people who actually do counterfeits and stuff, but not, not like this. This is just a tutorial, so everybody's going to look a little different, and that's totally fine. this point in my class I was trying to figure out what exactly I wanted to do after this because it didn't feel complete to me but I figured maybe my students would think that it was complete but I wasn't going to make their decision for them and I'm not going to make it for you either but we're about to have another choose your own adventure moment and you'll get to decide if you are happy with your painting as it is and want to sign it. Or if you want to put a nice coffee glaze over it. So think on that for a few minutes. Or seconds. <laughs>
scraping a lot of it off and just go over my painting with it. So it gives these little pops of copper in there. So if that seems like something you want to do, then go ahead and do it. But if that's not something you want to do, you don't have to. Like I said, it's kind of a choose your own adventure thing. And whatever you choose will be right for you. See, this is, it kind of gives you a hint of what it looks like. Then I went in and I fixed the spots that I wanted to actually not be covered. And that's always important to do if you use this kind of technique. You want to make sure that it looks exactly how you picture it looking or how it feels best to you. Not how it feels best to the person teaching you or a friend or anybody else. This is about you expressing yourself properly. When I went over it, there were some that just got really messy, <laughs> like the smears were not good, so I had to fix all of those, but I actually had a lot of fun teaching this class and fixing my mistakes, and I hope that next time I teach, she'll join me, so bye guys. <laughs>